In this video, we're going to begin subsection 7.4.2 on the independence of two random variables. We're going to review the independence of two events A and B first of all, so definition 7.4.4. Events A and B are called independent if the probability of A and B, which is the probability of A intersect B, is the probability of A times the probability of B. And just a little note that there is actually an equivalent definition of independence in terms of conditional probability. Events A and B are independent if and only if the probability of A given B is just the probability of A. But this is the definition that we are going to base ourselves on for the independence, the independence of two random variables. Definition 7.4.5. Two discrete random variables, x and y, with joint probability mass function, p of x, y, are called independent if for every x, y pair, p of x, y is p sub x of x times p sub y of y, where p sub x of x and p sub y of y are the marginals that we have been looking at, the marginal probability mass functions for x and y respectively. Two continuous random variables, x and y, with joint probability density function, f of x, y, are called independent if for every x, y pair, f of x, y is f sub x of x times f sub y of y, where again these things are the marginals. So f sub x of x and f sub y of y are the marginal probability density functions now, because we've got continuous variables for x and y respectively. And if neither of the above are satisfied for every x-y pair, then x and y are called dependent. Example 7.4.3, we're asked to revisit example 7.4.1 to determine if x and y are dependent or independent. So the joint mass function is given here. So what we're going to do is start out by checking each x-y pair to see if this is true. And if we find one that fails to satisfy this relationship, well then the x, y variables will be dependent. And if they all satisfy that relationship, then x and y will be independent. So let's start with p of 1, 1. So p of 1, 1, that is sitting right here, that is a, a 0 0.12. Is that equal to, well, what we're looking for is p sub x of 1 times p sub y of 1. So these are the marginals, and we remember how we got those. p sub x of 1, we would have added up across the row. So p sub x of 1 is, uh, what did we get here, 0 0.2. So 0 0.2 times, uh, and p sub y of 1, we would have added down that column, which has given us 0 0.51. So 0 0.51, and these two things are not equal. This ends up by giving us 0 0.102. And so we have one pair already that's failed. We don't need to check the rest. We know that that relationship is not satisfied for every xy pair, because here's one that's failed. So we can immediately conclude that x and y are not independent, they are dependent. So x and y are dependent. So that is what the takeaway tells us, that to show that x and y are dependent, it's sufficient to find a single, just one, just one xy pair where that relationship, that the joint function is the product of the marginals, where that fails to be true. To show that x and y are independent is much more onerous, however, because absolutely all the xy pairs have to be checked to show that this relationship indeed does hold so that it is equal to the product of the marginals for every xy pair. Example 7.4.4, now we're looking at continuous variables. So we're going to revisit example 7.4.2 to determine if x and y are independent or dependent. The joint density was here, and these are the joint the not the joint marginals, these are the marginals that we found. So what we want to see is the f of x, y, is this the product of the marginals? Well, 2x plus 4y certainly is not equal to 2 minus 2x times 1 plus 2y minus 3y squared, which is f 
sub x of x times f sub y of y. And if that is the case, well, because those two things are not equal, x and y are again dependent. So x and y are dependent. In the next video, we'll do example 7.4.5 and see what it looks like when x and y are independent. See you then.